Hello and welcome to a new episode of Simply Electric with the 2024 Kia EV6 all-wheel drive powered by a large battery where we present to you in two videos first today the review with the test drive and then in a second video the consumption run with the charging check the pros and cons of the uh, 2024 Kia EV6 want to show before we start please check if you are part one for the electric community if not we'd love your support with a subscription that way you won't miss the second video with the test drive and as always we start from the outside start from the front and take a look at the front end of the 2024 Kia EV6 all-wheel drive we have shown you the rear wheel drive variant with the big battery and the top model so far the Kia EV6 GT with its 599 horsepower from the front they differ in subtle yet noticeable nuances we have basically the baseline plus various packages here beautifully in this stone gray metallic I truly love it it's gray with a touch of beige added in it this is a beautifully modern, nice color that fits very exceptionally well with the sleek and shiny black accentuation, bringing a visually stunning contrast. We essentially have the drive package included here, and this also contains the adaptive LED light, which probably resembles matrix functions. That's how we perceived it while driving. It's nice that they uh, painted the wheel arches here because we have a cross utility vehicle here. It's almost like a mix between a station wagon and an SUV with big chunky rims, which are also available as an option if you prefer to customize. Here in 20 inches, 255, 45R20, the base is, I believe, 19 inches, also kind of dynamically aero optimized. I think it suits the Kia EV6 really well. The roof is nicely painted in body color and in between everything is shiny black again, including the exterior mirrors, recessed door handles for better aerodynamics, and at the bottom the side skirt is shiny black again with a chrome line to naturally and perfectly meet the premium and exceptionally high Kia standards here with us. What I can tolerate is when the shark fin, like here, is in the car's color, and Stefan, if you come a bit closer with the rear spoiler, I have to say I actually quite like it from the side. So even on the EV6, it looks extremely dynamic. You often criticize it, but here the design of the rear spoiler is incredibly awesome and distinctive. Yeah, Kia decided to skip the rear windshield wiper and the community is sort of upset by this. Split in two halves. Some say the design looks absolutely amazing, especially at the back with the snack bar and the LED light strip underneath. Others say yes, but I do want to be able to wipe away raindrops in the rain. Write in the comments, are you team rear wiper or are you team no rear wiper? And tell us why you made that particular choice. Yes, the charging port is installed here on the back right. And it also features the brilliant 800 volt technology. We have 77.4 kilowatt hours gross and 74 kilowatt hours net available. And we can charge DC with up to 235 kilowatt. We'll show you that during the efficiency drive. It's supposed to go from 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. And at home with an AC wall box and a public wall box, you have the option to charge with three phase 11 kiloballers so that in a good seven, seven and a half hours, you have a fully charged battery again. Yeah, otherwise it's like, I think just a pleasantly unique and innovative design that stands out quite a bit. What Kia offers us here really and genuinely stands out, meaning it doesn't look like the usual European vehicles, but rather I think it has this pleasantly unique and different charm that's hard to find elsewhere. It's 4.68 meters long, 1.88 meters wide, plus exterior mirrors, and 1.55 meters high. That means it doesn't have that typical SUV height, you know, usually around 1.6 meters or more, which is common. The wheelbase is an impressive 2.90 meters. This, of course, comes from the build on close rows in the electric platform, giving us short overhangs at the front and rear. With AWD, we have performance galore to offer. That means 239 kilo dollars from the electric motor on the rear axle and an electric motor on the front axle combined. 325 horsepower with 605 newton meters of torque. And we'll see in the driving report if it really has some punch. And whether it goes from 0 to 105.2 seconds, we'll measure that together with you using GPS. During the consumption drive, we reach the top speed. It's limited at 185 kilometers h. But what Stefan does is clear, right? Adjust a bit. Tailwind throttle fully engaged for now, my friend. Downhill. The curb weight is two tons, and we want to see how it handles while being pushed sportily through sharp, tight corners in order to thoroughly judge its agility and overall performance on challenging roads. 
I forgot to mention the list price of our subject. It's just over 66,000 euros, but don't let that scare you off. Consult with your Kia dealer, explore Kia's website. They currently have sensational leasing and financing conditions for electric models, so the gross list price is not that crucial because our car, like almost always, is almost fully loaded. What you get in the baseline, in the basic, there's also a business line and there's a GT line. So make sure to check the configurator sometimes. Yes, let's take a look under the hood. And this is what I must praise about Kia. We have hood lifts here, we have insulation, and we even have a small frunk where you can at least fit a Type 2 charging cable. And that's important when you don't want to mix our cozy Type 2 cable with our clean luggage in the trunk. Now, let's hear how Korean steel, aluminum, or whatever the hood is. Um, sounds when it's this light. Two tons of curb mm -hmm. weight also for the hood. It's extremely light. Great. Quick workout plan today? Or do you mean, no, didn't. It's due to exhaust fans. <laughs> Let's hear how it sounds, shall we? Three, two, one. Sat. Much more important for some of you is not the frunk, but the trunk. So the boot at the back, and you have two options to open it. One is via the intelligent tailgate control, which is brilliant, but can also be annoying when you walk past the car with the key and it keeps beeping because it just opens automatically by proximity, which isn't possible now because the car is in operation. Otherwise, you are, of course, welcome to press the button above the license plate and then the tailgate opens servo electrically. Here we have a nice parcel shelf that also has a certain stability so you can lay a nice coat or jacket on it. Unfortunately, it's without a guide rail because I believe that's not technically possible here. You then have the option to load 480 liters of trunk volume. We also have a double level here where we can store some stuff, including the tow hitch, more on that later, like a hitch download plug, which means you can draw up to 3.6 kilowatts from the battery. To possibly connect an electric grill or a coffee machine, or even to store charging cables or other small items in the double loading floor. Where Kia is pushing forward, not just with the smart tailgate opening, but also with spring-loaded mechanisms for rear seat folding. Greetings, friends. Today, we offer 40% on the passenger side for all you skiers and friends of the long items at the hardware store. Also worth mentioning is that you also have a pass-through option here on the driver's side in the second half where you can then easily fold down 60% of the driver's side, increasing the total cargo space from 480 liters to 1260 liters. That's remarkable to potentially even move grandma's massive wardrobe all at once, leaving her amazed by the ease. Stefan, let me guess, can you tell me what opens up electronically? Closes electrically. Let's see. I see, um, always with a bit of jingling and fuss, it then goes servo closed, ensuring very high quality. Unfortunately, we don't have servo closing in the doors, although in this price range, it's not always a standard feature. Additionally, you have the option to carry up to 80 kilo on the roof rack and you get the optional tow bar, which is very useful for transporting additional loads that you can attach below. Then here with the AWD, with 750 kilo unbraked trailer load, up to 1.6 tons. Brake trailer load is quite something, right? Surely something happens now, right? And for our bicycle friends and e-bike enthusiasts, 100 kilos of hitch load, which is also important if you want to transport heavier bikes with three or four people, right? They fit up there, yeah. All right, right. We have already shown you everything outside, so now let's go inside and thoroughly take a look around. We have double glazing here, two panes connected with a film, where we naturally also want to measure the interior noise with our sound level meter later. That's simply wonderful. I strongly believe it is part of the comfort package, which our Pro Band also includes here for you. Yes, inside we come to the door panel. Here I have to partly praise, but also partly address something. Here we have some slightly harder plastic, but made just a bit soft. I'll just about tolerate that. Here we have piano lacquer. It's always a bit prone to fingerprints and scratches. We also have the electric seats with the seating package. There's a small padded faux leather cushion here. Here too, faux leather is used. Uh, and, uh, I think we even have leather-free interiors at Kia. Yes, and with the sound package, we obviously have the Meridian Surround sound package, which we really want to try out with you all later on to demonstrate its full potential. Let's get to the bad part down here. All hard plastic. I don't care if it's recycled or not. Hard plastic remains hard. Plastic. But Kia, really cool and beautifully lined with carpet here. Yes, truly. That works. No Mercedes EQS for on 80K, am I right? Yeah. That works. 
sensational. You can also fit a nice water bottle in here. So you have to say it's a bit conflicted. In the past, we used to criticize the Asians a little bit for their plastic interiors, but now I feel like in many ways they are sometimes even surpassing us. Don't you agree? That can happen. We need to be careful. Welcome to the cockpit of the Kia EV6. Here we have, on the one hand, the head-up display installed in our test model, which offers us very good information and also some augmented reality support. We have a very nice, large, I believe, 12-inch driver display where we can access all essential information and also customize it to our needs through various menu structures. Then we have here a very, very nice faux leather steering wheel with haptic buttons and paddles which you can orient very well even while driving blind. Thanks to this middle paddle, you can see that by my thumb, can find again. And I also think the drive mode switch is super cool, where you can switch between eco, comfort, and sport. That's always important too. If you need some quick dynamics, you just push a button and you're instantly in sport mode with the full 239 kilobau and 605 newton meters. Torque also impressively executed here with a bit of stainless steel. I really like that. And then we have infotainment, 12.9 inches, where you have all the functions, including the comprehensive map feature, which adds extra convenience. Where you can quickly and smoothly navigate the menu options, providing a seamless experience that makes finding what you need simple and efficient. It actually goes very smoothly and without issues here if you press on it. You've always got the home button to go back. And there's also a decent processor, in my opinion, in terms of speed. Very, very nice ambient lighting, part of the comfort package. And then we have the double layer on the one hand for climate control. I like it with the buttons so you can find it again. Heat cold. And then with the toggle function for the quick menu selection button, if you want to return to the large map, for example. This is also well done. Ergonomically, we have a divided center console here. We'll show you again from the side in a moment. Our vehicle has seat ventilation, heating, wheel heating, seat ventilation, and passenger seat. The start-stop button, and I have to criticize Kia a bit here. If I kindly get out and lock the car, then please add a function that will turn it automatically off as soon as possible. It can't be that he just keeps dinging and dinging and I have to get back in, press the button and then turn off the entire car every single time I leave and come back. I find that a bit annoying. Write in the comments if you see it that way too. Yes, gear selection control, also a parking pilot here. If you need it, they have the auto hold function and can also then quickly switch to the camera view accordingly. Our test subject also has a 360 degree camera. Bienvenue, ami, aujourd'hui. We'll show you all those details in a bit more detail soon. Inductive charging pad for the driver or passenger. It would have been nice, of course, to have two. Then we have the cup holders, also with a little rubber inside, so nothing rattles and clatters. I think it's well done, too. We've got another small compartment here for the GPS antenna of our Draggy, and an additional large compartment where you can conveniently store various things, such as the Kia keychain, which I am not using at the moment because I have another one. Otherwise, we have a nice center armrest, again, covered with that kind of fabric, feels good. It's also kind of soft, padded underneath, and make sure that I actually have a very, have very good ergonomics, because I can also adjust the steering wheel in height and distance accordingly. A view from the side also reveals very clearly just exactly how much useful space can be utilized effectively in electric mobility. That means no drive shaft tunnel here, no transmission in the way. We have a USB-A, a, a USB-C port, and here we have a compartment where you can actually store a small wallet. Stefan, where's my man purse? It wasn't with us in Barcelona either. I don't know, but I think I know who has the other suitcase at home and where it is. All right, otherwise we have this division with the upper level, which I showed you. I actually find it quite neat. And then we have these faux leather seats from Kia, which are perforated for ventilation for this seating. We have light thigh support here, which could perhaps even be a bit more for the sporty vehicle. Good lateral support here in the lumbar region. I'm missing a few small bulges here. If you have broader shoulders to rest your shoulder on, and otherwise you have a very nice comfort headrest, which is also adjustable in height and can be adjusted accordingly at a distance, right? But also a few drawbacks. We have, on the one hand, our test model is missing it, but there's certainly an available option for an appropriate glass sunroof. I actually find it quite practical. Or, well, what I miss a little is maybe a big glass roof. Some of you love that, especially for the rear passengers who want to watch the sky. And what I also have to criticize a bit is this really hard plastic here. 
Then the glove compartment, I'm also missing a bit of felt or carpeting inside. Guys, you solved it incredibly well in the doors and in the glove compartment. It might have been simply overlooked or perhaps even intentionally left out by someone. I don't know. And what I also don't like so much is this hard plastic at the door entry. I'm always so scared that he might, you know, scratch it a little. And also right here at the B pillar, the seat belt can easily rattle if it's not padded, which can be quite annoying and distracting while you're driving. We want to see if Ollie, with his 1.85 meters height and his 99.9 .9 kilograms weight, can fit elegantly into the cross utility vehicle. And there we have a nice start for sure, but it's relatively shallow here. The roof continues to go higher and around here. You saw it, I even slightly bumped against the roof because I wasn't paying attention. That's far from ideal. Let's head to the back seat where I truly have a lot of space, ample leg room, and we can really stretch out and get comfortable during the ride. The seat is, as always, adjusted to the B pillar and where you have the option to either recline the rear seat back all the way back, like I have now, to have a lounging position or maybe set it upright, just like now, to thoroughly maximize the available space for loading in the trunk. But the locking function is missing here. Folds up nicely. Stefan, can you pull the lever down there so I can push the seat back? To show our viewers something, let it go because now it's locked, it's a little bit high and slightly vertical, making it less accessible than before. So somehow with the center armrest, I feel as though I'm quite evidently missing a bit of important ergonomics. Yeah, otherwise we have here a big compartment that folds out, which also extends a bit to the back here. Alternatively, we can easily slide out this tray for two convenient cup holders. That's already quite good. We've got child isofix mounts, driver passenger side. We also have convenient pockets to tuck the straps into neatly when we fold down the rear seat benches for more storage space. That's absolutely fantastic. And now we also have the air vents in the B pillar. I think that's okay. Although it would be nice if we had more in the middle too, adding more much needed variety. Yes, we have USB-C ports here on the backrests. Um, that's fine, but there's also really hard plastic here again. And if you see this here, it's a press van, which arrives slightly damaged on the side panels during transport. And you can imagine if you use such a car for three or four years on a lease, um, that it probably won't be avoided. Unless you handle it with kid gloves, there might be a scratch here or there. And that's why, even if it annoys some people, I'm just so persistent with hard plastic steps, right? Yes. Or possibly get something entirely different. You could somehow, you know, soften this up a bit more gently. Uh, um, um, maybe cover it with some faux leather or perhaps a carpet or something else. I really don't know for sure, but that might work. Look, there's a carpet down here so that you don't damage anything with your shoes under the seats. So KIA is really making an effort, but it kind of smells like they're just fixing a few minor flaws with the facelift. Or what do you think? I know you're impatient. I am too, because we really want this to be successful. Experience the 239 kilo dollars with you. Let's get in for the review. We want to go on the test drive. Let's start with the turning circle. That's 11.9 meters. When I consider that the Mercedes EQS manages it in 11 meters with rear axle steering, then that's not exactly small, but I think it's still fairly acceptable for city traffic. For such a modern cross utility vehicle, we of course also want to check how can you park with the four meter 68 and we've already illustrated to you you have the utmost support here with our test subject meaning you possess a good rear view camera in terms of size you also have assist lines that help you find the correct way into the parking space which i didn't find now because i'm half on two parking spaces and of course you have the option to walk around the car after parking to verify if everything is indeed perfect, just like it's parked here, which is essential for ensuring safety and precision in your parking attempt. When you drive out, you've got a front camera. That's really undoubtedly brilliant. You can also adjust it to a 180 degree top-down view. And you also have the option, of course, to see the steering angle again for the popular curb, which helps to avoid hitting it accordingly while driving. We also noticed the good build quality of the Kia EV6 here at 30 km h on the cobblestones. Nothing rustles here, nothing creaks here, nothing rattles here, except my spare change in the center console. But of course, I'm responsible for that myself. There happens to be such a huge pothole here. We'll drive through there on purpose, and that also absorbs it rather firmly yet comfortably. 
I forgot to mention earlier, there's a third front USB-C port, plus 12 volts, 180 watts, a 230 volt power socket with a cover. At the rear seat in the footwell area are additional connectors. So you also have the opportunity then to use and operate electronic devices. Uh, in the vehicle, where the new EV6 shines is on winding country roads that it navigates smoothly. You see this here, where it goes up and down, sharp curves. You can nicely accelerate with the all-wheel drive. It stays stable and you can quickly handle such stages, ensuring you maintain control without significant problems. With the all-wheel drive, you also have support, for example, if you use the paddle shifters on the steering wheel to adjust the recuperation up to the iPedal drive, where you get maximum recuperation, accelerates again, then you drive up to a car, release the accelerator pedal, and it decelerates. I must say it's really a lot of fun to glide through the Mecklenburg streets here with the EV6 Curve Raider. AWD. Uh, I have now activated the sport mode. That means go zero to 100. I also started resetting the draggy, which is fine, okay? And now we would do the launch. Factory claim zero to 100 is 5.2 seconds. Unfortunately, it doesn't have launch control, but let's see what we get. And he's already jumping straight ahead into it. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Wow, that was really great. No one's behind us. Let's do the brake check. And here too, he stays nicely on the line and comes to a stop very quickly because it's always important that we not only accelerate with the 239 kilo of maximum, we'll see in a moment what that results in. But slow down, Stefan, right? Absolutely. Uh, both important. And that's where it just has punch. It feels almost here in the AWD much, much stronger, obviously, than in the RWD, but similar to an American supercar, right? Absolutely. And I have to tell you, it's really fun to cruise along the country roads of McPom here. Uh, and I think that's actually a motivation to head back to the Gross Glockner High Alpine Road, right? Absolutely, I'm looking forward to it. And let's see how he drifts, right? What do you think? Whether you can drive it sideways. Let's analyze the data on the draggy. The lower values are the crucial zero to 100. In 6.42 seconds, because I accelerated again after braking, that's why there are values up there, 0 to 50 or 60 in 3.87, 0 to 50 in 3.1 seconds. It could be more efficient and faster if he didn't have that moment of hesitation at the beginning. Exactly, he needs that little extra kick. Because I had the pedal to the metal, my left foot on the brake, like you usually do with launch control, but then it just went bump and took off. And I think that's also this bup, which didn't accelerate him in 5.2 seconds as specified. So either we have the typical case of user error from my side again, because maybe I should have just accelerated it with the gas pedal from the auto hold function and not with my left foot on the brake, because it somehow triggers an additional reaction in the system, right? Could be. Yeah, but we could actually try that again, right? What do you think? Sure. Let's do it. The EV6 is in auto hold. We're ready to go. Three, two, one, go. And now we are heading off once more again. 30, 50, 70, 80, 90, 100. So what do the results say? I think it's time to end our segment. Yes, that's useless too. Yes, really. That's why we're doing it. It's now verified 0 to 100, 5.59 seconds. I'll take that given the 5.2 factory spec. From 0 to 60 in less than 3 seconds, 2.66, and from 0 to 50 and, and um, in just 2.15 seconds. That's decent, right? That's great. Yeah, I think so. So we're slow. But here it goes with Comrade EV68. It's moving forward. Let's talk about driving and travel comfort. I went back to comfort mode and Kia has generously provided its European customers a specially designed European suspension that enhances the overall driving experience. Many Asians can't manage that because they have completely different preferences and so do the Americans compared to us in Europe. We appreciate it being sturdy, supremely comfortable and that's precisely what the Kia delivers. You can tell too that it offers direct steering and it has remarkably good road grip. We don't have any big wobbling movements when we steer the wheel around here. So nothing wobbles here just like in a Land Rover Defender or a Range Rover Sport. I think that's really well done and suitable for the urban audience that enjoys traveling across the country, providing stability and reliability for their journey, whether in the city or on the open road. Designed. What does your gut feeling say, Stefan? Yes, very good. Like I'm used to from the kiosk. I'm quite comfortable here. 
Sure, some additional thigh support, like you mentioned earlier, would definitely be really nice, but otherwise, this is surprisingly comfortable. Let's measure the interior noise at 50 kilonets a H. 56, 57 decibels, it's nice and quiet. We accelerate to 70 kilometer H. Fifty-nine sixty dB. That's also a top value. For comparison, if we take the VW ID3, we measured it at sixty point sixty-one dB at fifty kilometer h. We'll do another hundred in a moment. Uh, we're going a hundred kilometer. Hey? Sixty-two, sixty-three decibels. That's really an excellent value. Uh, VW ID3 is around mid seventy decibels. Wow, today is truly our lucky day, isn't it great? Yeah. We have all the necessary records here, very nice. In the Kia EV6, we also have the drive package included, which features the second generation highway drive assist for advanced, safer driving experiences on all types of roads. Here, Kia has made notable and substantial improvements in both the lane keeping and longitudinal functions, and also, especially on the highway, when the HDA system is now fully active, making it much more efficient and reliable overall where we then also tend to get significantly more comprehensive support than with the initial system. What I slightly miss here, in towns as well as on country roads, is the predictive control. We actually just have them on the highway and only then if we um, drive at the permitted speed limit. We have issues with traffic sign recognition. I really wish for this predictive driving. In general, the VW group can do it in all brands, Skoda, VW, Audi, Porsche with Endo Drive, as well as BMW and Mercedes. And I would hope that Kia catches up there and essentially adopts that accordingly. What they really did well is keeping in the middle of the lane. On the highway, it works perfectly. On winding country roads, you sometimes have to sort of, in plain English, tighten your butt cheeks because it can get a bit dizzying at times, right? Always be sure to stay on your toes just a bit more. Exactly. And what I would also wish for at the latest during the facelift is a capacitive gesture recognition. That means if the vehicle detects that we are not attentive, it says hold the steering wheel, touch, feel, and then we have it actually capacitive, which means three fingers but we always have to tweak the steering wheel a bit. That's a bit tiring, isn't it? Yeah. That's good. A bit annoying sometimes, yes, that's true. Or the capacitive guide. He doesn't always recognize that. So I don't know what causes it because sometimes a tiny jerk is enough. No, I yeah. Well, but otherwise I have to say, it's a good system that works well and I'm quite impressed by it. In my opinion, traffic sign recognition has also improved significantly. So there are only a few minor errors noticeable, but this predictive feature, that's something I would really, really wish for Kia and the car. Well, he does have capacitive. No, he doesn't. I always have to guide a little bit. I don't know. So that would definitely be an advantage because now it's showing 70. The car is going 100, even though it shows 70. Kia, what's going on? You can't transform that. Also program accordingly outside the highways. Other manufacturers can do it too. Um, oh, what good are these assist systems if you don't have a good sound system, right? Yes, nothing at all. So the sound in the key is good. We have that in our RWD. But this Meridian surround sound system is really pretty awesome, right? Yeah. Nice clear tweeters, good mid-range and decent bass, but ultimately lacking that impactful subwoofer punch for deeper sound. So this afterburn really just a bit of aftershock. But I must say, with Meridian sound systems, it's really fun. Enjoy a cruise in glorious weather. Listen to the soothing sound. Let's go. Last but not least, you also have the option to mirror your smartphone, like here, for example, with Apple CarPlay, also across the entire screen. However, that's generally the case with most modern vehicles nowadays um, as well. Yes, and with that, let's perhaps move on to the conclusion, interim conclusion, because the consumption test with the charging check will follow in the second video. I have to say, the Kia EV6 AWD is a real joy, and I wouldn't have thought, because we have the RWD, that it would make such a difference, right? Yeah, well, RWD, you know, it just pulls a bit more, has a bit more power, you know, it's more fun. Just like I said earlier, the cornering master, he can do that too, yeah, it's fun. And so I believe with the interesting offers that Kia now has in leasing and financing, you can also think about 
list price of the test subject at 66k we kind of overlook it a bit because most people lease such a car for three four years with maybe 10,000 or 20,000 kilometers then have an attractive leasing rate and then you probably want to switch to the facelift of the EV6 or EV9 and are not tied to such a car forever right yes absolutely especially the development particularly in electromobility it keeps progressing so accordingly reading is without a doubt i think certainly the more compelling and undoubtedly more attractive option for many people and with that we've reached the conclusion of today's video visit your local kia dealer take the car for a test drive and see if it matches the details we've provided feel free to ask the dealer any questions you may have and thank you for watching we hope this information helps you make an informed decision yes we hope you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up Please check if you're part of the Simply Electric community, have a token, support us with a subscription, and we'll see each other soon in the next video for the consumption drive and charging check. Thank you for watching, stay healthy, and see you soon. Yours, Oli. Stefan, what are we doing with the Shark Clasp now, considering all options? Because on the EV6, I actually find them kind of sexy. So, in the overall package, it fits. Plus, in the car color. Ah, tough. Perhaps we should consider something different. Write it in the comments how you see it.